we're going to talk about the initiation of one of these local potentials. Local meaning not down the entire axon, <clears throat> just within the cell body or dendrites. So something has to stimulate this. That stimulus is going to open up some ion channels, open up gated ion channels, either chemically gated or mechanically gated. This is like a touch receptor in the skin. We're gonna be using chemically gated as an example. Um, yeah, so here's actually a diagram that I drew, I drew a similar thing for you at the end of a previous video where I labeled on a neuron where the chemically gated ion channels are where the voltage-gated ion channels are and all the different types you need to know about. So what I want to do now is start here, start with a stimulus. A stimulus is going to open a gated ion channel and that's going to initiate the action potential. Um, not every time, but potentially. So let's zoom in to a little piece, to, to the dendrite here. Let's see what's, what, is located here. Well, I've already told you, right? Chemically gated ion channels are located there. Let's look at those. You know what those look like, right? They are closed because they're gated and they've got a spot for some chemical to bind them. That chemical could be a neurotransmitter. Um, it could be another circulating chemical messenger. Here, I'm just gonna give you an example. You may have heard of glutamate. We'll come back to glutamate, an excitatory neurotransmitter. Um, so this chemical, glutamate, is going to bind. And when it binds, it's going to open up the ion channel. We know that, right? That's going to change the permeability of the membrane to whatever ion this channel allows through. So let's say this is a sodium channel here that glutamate binds to. So again, Sodium is going to rush into the cell once that membrane protein opens. What's going to happen to the membrane potential again? Could we graph that? Let's do it. Okay, on here, what I'd like you to do is graph the membrane potential changes during a local potential. So this graph here is similar to what I drew in that previous slide over time on the x-axis, membrane potential on the y-axis. And I've got some different stimuli here, or a removal of stimuli that I'd like you to um, pay attention to. So what we're going to do is draw a graph showing the changes in membrane potential. That means up, down, over time, due to the movement of the ion flow over time, which is due to whatever I'm telling you happens up here. So if a chemically, chemical stimulus opens gated ion channels, for example, glutamate, we're here at rest. What's going to happen? Depolarize. When it's removed, repolarize. What happens if we open potassium channels? Wait a minute. Okay, there's high potassium inside the cell, but it's also negative inside the cell. So the electrical gradient, we, we got to draw this, high potassium. The electrical gradient is actually in, but the chemical gradient is out. And I'm just gonna tell you this, um, that the chemical gradient is larger when we're talking about minus 70. Potassium will actually keep flowing out of the cell until the membrane potential reaches about negative 90. That's the point at which the two balance out. So when we open up potassium channels, potassium is going to rush out of the cell. That's going to make the cell membrane become more negative. We have positive things leaving the cell until the stimulus is removed. Now, if I wanted you to label, oops, what I wanna do is just erase this. Um, if I want you to label what, this, what these terms are called. Let me just bring this up here. So we've already done this. Opening of a sodium channel, then closing. Opening of a potassium channel, then closing. You've done that. Could you label where this cell is hyperpolarized, depolarized, and repolarizing? Hope you can. So here we've got a depolarize. Here. 
here, we've got a hyperpolarized. What does hyperpolarized mean? It means really polar. It's more polar than it was before. Yes, I got that. And then we have a repolarize as we're going back negative again. Going back towards rest. So anything going back towards resting memory potential is repolarizing. Okay, so local potentials. These, these are both examples of local potentials. Blips, changes in memory potential, not yet an action potential. That distinction will come clear later. Local potentials can either be depolarizing or hyperpolarizing. They can make the negative, the inside of the cell, either more negative or more positive, depending on what? Depending on what kind of channels open, right? Because the channel that opens is gonna determine what ion is able to go through. Different ions move through in different directions. I'll tell you right now, calcium and chloride are two other ions that can move and will move through differently. <clears throat> so I believe here I've got the same thing I just drew, but kind of a nicer um, schematic of it. So you can kind of see the same thing I just showed. And what's happening here is something that is causing that channel to open. Here we've got that chemical that is binding, chemical stimulus. Once it's bound, causes the ions to flow in. When those ions flow in, the inside of the cell becomes less negative. So this is a schematic of what's happening with the membrane proteins. Likewise, here we've got what happened with potassium channels. Notice this return to resting potential isn't typically called repolarization. Repolarization is typically referred to as becoming negative again. So depolarization, repolarization kind of go together. In this scenario here, we've also got ion channels that were present. Um, this ligand gated ion channel is a potassium channel. When potassium opens, channels open, potassium is going to flow out. So this is making the cell more negative. Okay. Finishing up with graded potentials. Remember that they are local or graded, so they are going to spread only as far as the stimulus intensity, um, related to that stimulus intensity. So they are going to then decrease in strength depending on how far um, as they travel. So that means if they are far from the axon hillock, they are not going to generate an action potential. So a stimulus, Here's our stimulus. Um, this is the location here. A stimulus opens gated ion channels. The stimulus is, is typically going to be a neurotransmitter. It could be a physical stimulus for mechanical ion channels. So sodium, for example. Here is our stimulus opening sodium ion channels. The membrane potential changes the most at this site of stimulation. So site number one here, right next to where that stimulus was, um, right, we're zoomed in to an axon terminal and a postsynaptic neuron. This is our presynaptic membrane here. Point of stimulation, and then point number one is the closest location. This axis here is going to be um, amount of depolarization. Representing the strength of that stimulus as it travels away from the site of origin. The potent, that, that change, that depolarization decreases as we get farther away from the site of stimulation. Makes sense, right? So two, three, four, five, shown by these decreasing arrows, is representing 
a diminishing, right, or decreasing potential change, a decreasing depolarization. That is shown graphically like this, right? I, I think this picture makes, makes a little more sense to me, um, but showing the same idea. As you get further away from the point of stimulation, the effect of that stimulation decreases. It's passive spread. This effect is passive. Nothing is actively transporting it. It's the movement of ions inside of the cell. The stronger the stimulus, the stronger the change, the greater the change in memory potential, and the, the greater the area is that it travels. So stimulus size matters. What this means is graded potentials can be different sizes. They're graded. Um, and they, when they're initiated, either at the dendrites or cell body, right? That's where local potentials or graded potentials occur. They may or may not cause an action potential. Here is that idea, what I just said. Graded potentials can, so may or may not result in an action potential. Action potentials only are generated at the axon hillock. Another word for that is the trigger zone. So if depolarization is strong enough because the stimulus is strong enough, it, then it can reach the axon hillock and trigger an action potential. If the graded potential reaches that location. So first, just with one stimulus, here's a, a given stimulus, stimulus A, here it is. Um, a certain amount of neurotransmitters released, maybe one single firing of this neuron, um, results in ion. So this is our potential change, membrane potential change, and it's diminishing across space here. And by the time it gets to the axon hillock, it's not enough. So there is not enough ions present anymore. The effect of the stimulus is not enough to create, to trigger an action potential. Stimulus B, this is bigger, as indicated by a thicker arrow in this case. So because it's larger stimulus, it travels diminishing still, it's still diminishing, but it is just in this case, hypothetical, no numbers, it's big enough to trigger an action potential. So Big enough stimulus. The stimulus was here, equals sufficient depolarization. Where? At the axon hillock. This cell might have been super depolarized, like right here. Um, who cares? In this case, um, who cares? For, the, for generating an action potential at the axon hillock. Now, in reality, these graded potentials can sum in time and space. So there's not just one stimulus. There might be another one here and another one here and another one, this one might fire twice. So this neuron might reach threshold, which enough change in membrane potential at the axon hillock to fire an action potential because of more than one graded potential in time or space. We are going to come back to this after we get through the action potential, neurotransmitter release, and get to the postsynaptic cell. We will talk about the summation of graded potentials in time and space. At this point, I want you to know what a graded potential is, that they can vary in size depending on the stimulus strength and they diminish over space. They only generate an action potential if depolarization is sufficient at the axon hillock. 